my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus the Christ. In the Apostles' Creed, the article of the Holy Catholic Church is supplemented and explained by the addition of the words Communio Sanctorum. The Church of the Three One God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is not simply a humanly organized community measured by its religious and social ideals. Through baptism, all those who believe in Jesus, the Son of God, and the Savior of the world are incorporated into the Church once and for all. The Church is a house of the living God, and as a community of Jesus' disciples, it is the body of Christ, and his sacramental, that is to say, real and visible presence in our world. Christ, the head of the Church, conquered evil, overcame the separation of man from God, and the division that arose therefrom, and stripped death of its power. If the Church means fellowship with God in Christ, then there is a twofold relationship of its members to God. First, we have to fight against evil, sin and death on our earthly pilgrimage in the footsteps of Christ. This is the Ecclesia Militans. Then, at the end of the earthly journey, Having been without trials and temptations, we arrive at the goal of eternal fellowship with God in love. Thus the saints, united with the risen Christ, may celebrate victory over evil and death. The heavenly community of saints is therefore also called the Church Triumphant. This also includes those who have been saved but are undergoing the final process of painful qualification in love and to form the church suffering in purgatory. Anyone who is well versed in the Christian faith knows that terms such as church militant and church triumphant have a metaphorical meaning and that they are used only analogously. Those who are a little bit further away might think that these expressions have something to do with the religious wars of the Christian states in the 16th century or with the medieval papacy's political claims to power. However, the triumph of God's grace, which we all hope for as the victory of good over evil, has certainly nothing to do with the triumph that, for instance, Caesar celebrated when he had the unfortunate Vercingetorix and his defeated Gallic comrades in arms led through the streets of Rome to his, to his glory as general under the mockery of the mob. And it is an almost unbearable scandal for our Christian feelings today when Putin professes to be a Christian by kissing the icons of the Christ and the saints in Moscow's Cathedral of Christ the Savior, while at the same time publicly enjoying the taste of victory over the defeat of the Ukrainians in Mariupol, the city of St. Mary. Indeed, it is simply inhuman and anti-Christian to mock your prisoners, as uh, propaganda, Russian propaganda does, as Nazi criminals, and to threaten them with a death sentence in a show trial. Trials of this kind, which involve the destruction of human life, the violation of human dignity, the elimination of competitors, and the intimidation of dissidents have nothing to do with the triumph of the Christian faith. They are at odds with the holiness of the Church, which rejoices in God's triumph over evil and death, and works positively through Christians to build a more just world.
world. However, in religious and Christian language, we cannot do without the metaphors of war, struggle, defeat, and victory, because they come from the real world, which is still tainted by weakness, witnessness, selfishness, and lust of power. The battle between good and evil runs through world history until the end. In our fight for justice, freedom and truth, we participate in proclaiming Christ's victory over sin and death. We participate in the new creation until the last day, after which there will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness or pain. God's victories day will finally put an end to blood, sweet and tears, as Winston Churchill would say. As St. Paul puts in the epistle to the Ephesians, we do not fight against men of flesh and blood, rather we seek to stem the destructive power of evil in the world. In our hearts we conquer the fear of the abyss of nothingness. We are certain that in the end injustice will not triumph over those who suffer, or over those who are tortured or humiliated. God gives justice to the poor. When the Apostle speaks symbolically of the armor of God that we Christians should put on in the fight against evil, he has a Roman legendary in mind. But we Christians carry spiritual weapons. In contrast to military weapons, they do not injure anyone, but rather overcome the kingdom of evil and serve to build up the kingdom of God. Our defenses are justice and truth and the willingness to take the gospel of peace in the world. In one hand we hold the shield of faith. In our heads we wear the helmet of salvation. And in the other hand, we hold the word of God as his word, namely Christ, who holds ready for us, soldiers of Christ, the victory wreath of eternal life. We are not so out of touch as to think that we might build a suffering-free paradise on earth with the help of hegemonic politics, world economic forums, artificial intelligence and high-tech companies. All experiments to create a new world with the help of totalitarian political ideologies have failed terribly. But we are not so apocalyptic, on the other hand, as to now stay paralyzed at the meltdown of the third, third and last world war. For sure, the stature of the world is fading. Inevitably, everyone comes to the last hour of their earthly journey. But it wasn't all in vain. Those who die in the Lord are promised rest from their labors in building up the kingdom of God. When the perseverance of the saints who kept the commandments of God and faithfulness to Jesus is proven, then the Spirit of God tells them that in the heavenly triumphal procession they will carry with them their good works. Together with everything they ever did on earth in love for their fellow human beings. Victory over the powers of destruction in the world cannot be won by any mortal power of might, money and technology. The symbol of redeeming omnipotence is not the Roman or the Russian eagle, the Russian bear, the Chinese dragon, the British lion or the American sea eagle, but rather something entirely not military and not violent, namely the land of God that takes away the sin of the world without a single legion or armored division. 
the triumphal sun of the pilgrim and of the heavenly church instills fear and terror in no one as does the war cry and threatening gestures of the rulers of this world. The song of the triumphant church bursts joy and peace into the hearts of the redeemed. It is not a war cry, but a soothing sun of angels and sanctifiers in heaven. That is going our via in innumerable crowd from every nation, every tribe and tongue that John beholds in his vision points to the true ruler and savior, king of the world. Salvation is from our God, who sits on the throne and from the land. And heavenly choirs unite in worship of God and rejoice without end. Amen. Praise and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and might, and strength to our God.